Easy, easy. Topper for three. But I'll take that instead. I'll take three anytime I get it. There's a lot of confidence from Topper right there. That's Chad Toppert, the best three-point shooter in the Mountain West Conference, and he's not the first Topper to star for the Lobos. In fact, his whole family bleeds cherry and silver. R.G. Benyatis has more on what's become a special family affair. It's more than a game. It's about pride, tradition, and winning. The long-standing New Mexico-New Mexico State rivalry spans generations. It's a battle that it's not for you. Uh, there's people that are supporting you, the university, uh, the, all the Lobo fans, and, and you have an obligation, and it's like it's your work day, and you have to give it your best shot. Bob Toppert has been living the rivalry for nearly four decades. To this day, I've been out, I graduated in 75, I look back and those games were some of the best games, and I remember those games. Toppert played for the Lobos from 1971 to 1975, and during that time, the Lobos beat the Aggies five out of six games. He remembers it clearly. Every place you go were sold out. It was sold out, televised, and it was just a hum through the town and the state, and the entire state, about the Lobo Aggies. Who's good at the Aggies? Well, they, the Lobos. No, the Aggies. The Lobos. Although Bob's playing days ended more than 30 years ago, the rivalry lives on for him, not just as a fan, but as a father. It's great being, out, being able to continue the rivalry. Um, I remember when I was younger, I'd always, I'd always pretend that I was a Lobo and I was hitting the game-winning shot against the Aggies, and so uh, now it's just great to be on the court and, and reliving that, that, li that rivalry and continuing it. In his third year as a Lobo, Chad proudly wears a family tradition, number 33. That is really cool, uh, yeah, knowing that my dad wore uh, the same jersey that I'm wearing right now. It's just, it's just an unbelievable experience, and, you know, he's, he's always supporting me, and, and it's just great. You know, I look out there, and here's my son with my number, and, and it's just, it's uh, very humbling. Bob Toppert has fond memories of playing here at the pit against bitter rival New Mexico State University. And now, Chad is creating some of his own memories. And he's also fulfilling a legacy that began with his father and his mother. When I became a Lobo, that was a dream for me. That was really cool. I was so happy. In a home office filled with Lobo's history, Linda Toppert's most cherished possession is her varsity letter from when she played from 1972 to 1976. I'm proud of that, of course, our degrees. Yeah, it's great. I mean, she, she knows the game just like my dad, and so they've helped me in all aspects of my game. Uh, when I was little, you know, they taught me all the fundamentals, so I was, I was capable of, uh, of everything. While Bob and Linda still play basketball in their home, their greatest joy is seeing their son on the court. And Chad is truly living the Lobo dream. I mean, this is a true dream for him. He has always been a Lobo fan. And then to be able to be a Lobo, you know, follow in his parents' footsteps. If you wanted to draw your plan for the rest of your life and you want to put little uh, niches in there, I would like this, I would like that, I'm getting everything I, I really would ever want. You know, it's, uh, it's just uh, for Chad to be able to do what Linda and I did, you know, it makes a parent just so proud and uh, just um, a heart, well, heartwarming experience. I do uh, believe uh, that I have a, a great sense of pride because uh, my parents did play here and, you know, they both uh, uh, you know, wore the same uniforms that I'm wearing right now. They had the same experiences that I'm having right now and it just, it's just, uh, you know, my entire family has just, you know, been centered around New Mexico basketball and, you know, it's just great for me to, you know, play out to what, how they did and, and it's just, just uh, a great opportunity. An opportunity to continue a family legacy and the Lobo tradition. R.G. Mignottis for the Mountain. Thank you, R.G. Coach. It's a family you, affair. What do you think is that, about is that, that flying the family stones? May as well be. It's a family. Oh, great piece. <laughs> By the way, yeah. the, the dad, Lefty, looks like a shooter. 
I got I got to call out Linda. She was 0 for 2 in the video. Coach. And Chad's got to make sure that he's knocking down. Coach. But when you talk, no, when you talk about, hey, it's a great piece. When you talk about Chad Topper, you're talking about a guy that's only started two games. He's only playing 23 minutes a game, yet he's leading the team in scoring. And, and when you talk about his three-point shooting, he is deadly. I'm talking deadly. You see it. He doesn't have to put it on the floor. He cranks that baby back a little bit so it's unblockable. He can get a shot off against anybody, but he's being very unselfish. He's a team player. He's accept the role uh, that Coach Offord has de designed for him, yet he's still the leading scorer. Terrific junior campaign. I hope he doesn't feel too much pressure going into this game after that video with the mom and the dad. But they're excited, and they rightfully should be. This is a terrific young man who's having a great junior campaign. Give Linda a break, will you, yes. Coach? She stopped playing when I was a year old, Coach. Just go hold ahead up. and think of that. When that was her last year. It's just college. like all, all the time out. Go it's ahead. like That's riding a bike. When you're a shooter, uh -huh. you're a so. shooter. It doesn't matter how many times you're <laughs> off. you got to knock the ball down. All right. the other offense that can score out of your defense. That was Darren Prentice with the steal and the hoop, and then this is part of what you're talking about, Chad Topper becoming more than just a three-point shooter. Right, right. I, I like what Chad's doing defensively. I like how he's moving without the basketball. He's really developing a good shot fake to where he can put the ball on the floor a little bit. Uh, and he's got to know his strength to still that standstill uh, spot up jumps. Well, and that's something we've stressed all, all year, is sharing the ball, having a lot of fun, being unselfish. You know, here we passed up maybe two good shots, but we get our best three-point shooter, a wide open three, and right. the percentages just go up when you do that. And I think the guys are really enjoying it. a great play here by Darren. I think Darren's been as consistent as anybody on our team, and a great look back. Jamal's got a layup, and he's it back to to top to finish it off. And you can just see that their faces, uh, they're excited to play with one another, and uh, we just got to continue to get better. And again. Uh... Well, just great ball movement. You know, this is a good misdirection move. Here's Top with his shot fake. You know, this is something that I think he's really worked hard on in the offseason and into the fall. And as he can continue to work on that shot fake, it sets up this, where now you don't honor the shot fake, and he just beats you with that standstill shot, which is deadly. And exactly. one extra pass there to get uh, JR a bucket in the corner. And I just like what our offense is doing. Our spacing's been good. Our pace has been good. Here's a very good back to the basket move by Daniel. So uh, as long as you got pace and you got spacing. Getting back to the men's program, they are one of the top shooting teams in the country right now. And one local boy has a lot to do with that. We know Chad Toppert is one of the top three point gunners we've seen come through UNM, but he's trying to expand his game this season. This is of the Steve Alford era is the play of Chad Toppert. Not only is he knocking down shots from the outside, we know he can do that, but he's rebounding and running the floor too. I have a lot of confidence uh, in my game right now uh, in the system, and uh, you know everybody is. You know we're playing well as a team. We have a deep team, and and you know the system that we're running is uh, you know really really fits what uh, what personnel we have on this team. Alford says one of his goals when he took the job was to get players like Topper, Ramon Martinez, and Daniel Ferris to become quality players in all facets of the game. So far, so good. He's a great individual. He's a lot of fun to coach. He, he listens very well. He's a fierce competitor. Uh, I love the way he competes. Uh, he's improving at the defensive end. He, I want him to become more than just a standstill shooter. He's an outstanding standstill shooter. But for us to get where we want to get to, he's got to continue to, to evolve in all those areas. And I think he's working hard to do that. He really knows what he's talking about. And he's really uh, helped my game progress to what it is now. And, you know, I really see myself as, uh, you know, the type of player he was in college, you know, a shooter. and. And, you know, right now I'm developing uh, other aspects of my game. And, uh, you know, I think I'm a little bit more athletic than he was. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, he's a really, he was a really good player. And, you know, right now I'm just, uh, you know, uh, enjoying uh, learning from uh, such, a, such a great player and coach. There's no question that the Lobos' top players this season are J.R. Giddens and Tony Dandridge, if and when he comes back from his broken leg. But getting the Lobos over the hump belongs to players like Chad Topper.